Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this C++ crash course, we're going to be talking a little bit more about header guards and handling uh, multiple function definition problems. So last time we showed that we could use these simple header guards, so this if not define square h, define square h and if, uh, we could use these compiler directives to make sure that this file was only going to be completed uh, once, or, or sorry, uh, going to be included once, right? But, you know, somebody rightfully pointed out that this isn't a blanket fix, and they're absolutely correct, right? So if we have multiple uh, translation units, and we can think of this as having multiple steps to our compilation, so let's say that instead of uh, cube.h, we have a cube.cpp, right? So let's go ahead and open that up. So this cube.cpp, the code is exactly the same, except it's, being, uh, it's going to be compiled separately uh, from our main.cpp. Right, and so you know what these what the header guards help us do is uh, they help us if we have a single translation unit, right? So if we have uh, cube being included and square being included, right? So it, uh, the compiler can see, okay, well, you know, I've included, you know, say square dot h once. Don't include it again for anyone else that asks for it, right? But if we compile these separately, you know, the compiler is not going to be able to tell between different calls to you know G plus plus in this case. Right, so uh, in this case, our header guards won't help us, and we can see that right here. So we can go ahead and call G++ uh, dash C on cube.c++ or CPP, right, and that compiles just fine. And then we go ahead and just do G++ dash O uh, main, and then our two input files being our main.c++ and then uh, cube.o. And we see we still get this uh, multiple definitions of square int. Right, so in this video, we're going to look at two kind of hacky fixes to get around this problem and then, you know, talk about good design practice. So one of the hacky fixes we can do, so let's get rid of cube.o and let's open up square.h. So, you know, two of the kind of hacky fixes we can do is by modifying the square function. And one thing we can do is make it an inline function. Now, what inline functions do, this is typically a performance optimization, uh, is it says, I want you to take the body of, say, square, and I want you to just put the body wherever it's called, right? So instead of having to call a function, so setting up a function call, uh, passing the arguments, and then, you know, afterwards uh, returning from the function call, you know, we can avoid all of that overhead if all that code is just inlined uh, where it's called. Right, and so this has a negative effect of, you know, it can increase the size of our executable, our binary, um, which can be bad in, you know, embedded, you know, devices uh, that, you know, have tight uh, constraints uh, in terms of, you know, memory footprint. Uh, but in some cases, it's fine. That's a good performance optimization, depending on, of course, the length of the function you're trying to inline. Right, so in this case, this will get around our problem for us. So if we go ahead and uh, compile this exactly the same way. So if we just do G, uh, G++ dash C on cube, and then we do the exact same uh, G++ uh, dash O main, and then our two input files main.cpp and cube.o, right? We see that it compiles without any problems. And we can even run main, and we see that there's no issue here. So the next way we can get around this, so let's get rid of main, and let's get rid of cube.o, Let's open up square again. So uh, the next thing we can do, uh, oh, this is cube, sorry. So let's open up square, right? So the next thing we can do is instead of calling this inline, we could also alternatively make it a static function, right? So every time we compile something with this uh, function square, we'll get a private copy of this function uh, wherever, whatever translation unit we're compiling it in. So in this case, right, so static will work the exact same way. So if we go ahead and uh, Right, so we go ahead and compile cube first, and then we go ahead and compile uh, main again the exact same way. We see, you know, the compiler doesn't yell at us for multiple definitions, and we can run it, and it works exactly the same way as the inline version. Now, what we can also do is we can, you know, look at the binary. So we can use uh, obj dump d to disassemble main, and we'll just put the file as out.asm, and we'll open up out.asm. Right, and let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And we'll look for square. So here's inside of basically our main function. And we see we've got a call right here. We have a call to um, square, right? And we have an address too, right? This 90A. 
So if we look at 90a, you know, we see that up here we've got our definition of square, right? Uh, so the other thing we can tell is if we move down a little bit, right, we see we also have a call to our function cube here. So if we go ahead and go to a60 right here, so that's our address that we're going to jump to um, for this function. So if we go to a60, here's our function cube, and we see inside of cube, it also calls square. But we see that the address is different than the first square, right? So the address for this one is a50. So it has its own private version of square that it calls, right? And so that's another way we can get around having multiple function definitions, right? And we see that in both cases, this just works, right? Uh, but as I was kind of, you know, lead, leading this along, uh, there's an important thing to know is that this just isn't very good design practice. These seem like kind of hacky fixes, uh, and that's because they are. Right, so the better design strategy for something like this uh, is something that we call uh, the one definition rule. Right, so we only should have our functions or these our objects defined in a single place, right? And then we don't have any of these crazy problems of, oh, well, we can get around this by inlining it or making it static, right? So how do we go, go about doing this? So let's go ahead and just make a new file, right? Uh, so we'll just make a new file. We'll call it uh, functions.cpp. Right. And then what we'll do is we'll just cop, we'll just have cube.cpp, right? And we'll just strip out this function, right? And we'll paste it here, right? And this, you know, we'll comment this and say function that computes the cube of a number, right? And then what we can also do, right? So we can you know, get rid of all this as well, right? Oops. So what we can also do is we can open this up, uh, open up square.h, uh, right? And why don't we, well, first let's get rid of static and let's strip out this as well, right? So we'll strip out our definition of square, right? So now we've got our definitions of our functions in one place, right? So we'll comment this and we'll say, you know, function uh, that computes the square of a number right so now that's you know it's not yelling me about any errors there and so let's actually get rid of cube.cpp and square.h now right and now let's make a new file right and we'll call this uh, functions.h right so we'll go ahead and just run split right and then we'll just include our prototypes here right so we'll have int square right and this will take an integer a and then we'll have int cube, and this will also take an integer a, right? And then we'll just have, you know, a comment in here that says, you know, prototypes of our functions, right? So now if we go ahead and open up our uh, main.cpp, right? So we already had uh, a prototype in here for cube. We don't need that anymore. Uh, and all we need to do now is we'll include uh, functions.h, right? So now including functions.h, all this will do is we'll include uh, the function prototypes, right? And now we don't have to worry about, you know, any of these uh, multiple different, uh, you know, now we don't have to worry about, um, you know, having multiple different definitions, right? Because we're going to compile our functions in a single place, and then everyone that wants to use those functions, they just need to include the, uh, uh, they just need to include the header file, right? The header file that contains the prototypes, right? So this is just a you know better design pattern, right? So now when we compile this, we can go ahead and compile functions.cpp, so g++ dash c on functions.cpp, right? And then we can go ahead and compile uh, main, right? So we'll do g++ dash o main, uh, and then we'll input main.cpp and then functions.o, right? And now we don't have to worry about any header guards. We're not, you know, doing anything like making static functions or doing inlining. We just have, you know, a design pattern that works, right? And this is called the one definition rule. And this is very common in C++. Uh, but that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, feel free to check out any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. Right, so we have all kinds of videos on uh, C++, you know, data structures and algorithms, including, you know, sorting algorithms, uh, graph algorithms, etc. 
some parallel programming in C++ as well as some GPU programming with CUDA here. Right, so uh, in this video, we looked at C++ Crash Course. We go under fundamental concepts under miscellaneous topics. We've got uh, advanced guards right here, right? And here's our functions that we, uh, uh, or our files we modified for this example today. So feel free to, uh, as always, to send me any suggestions on videos that you would like um, or any topics that you would like me to cover. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.